Hello everybody, this is Bobo the Vulture, and uh, this is Let's Play F1 Manager 22. That gap in my speech is uh, hopefully the first of what's hopefully very few uh, instances or evidences uh, during this play session. I'm going to be all hopped up on the hydrocodone. Uh, I had a minor surgery earlier in the week. Um, don't worry, I'm fine. But, uh, yeah, so, I got some of the good stuff. Uh, also, need to stay home and not lift anything more than 10 pounds, so hopefully I don't have an exceptionally heavy PS5 controller. Um, so, we just finished, uh, the race in Melbourne, and considering how apparently goofed off I was then, uh, the, the way that I theoretically somehow pissed away all of the uh, setting information and new data we collected during free practice three uh, to sort of kneecap both of our stars here. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do a lot better than that. Uh, but we've got an uh, email that requires our response. I believe that today is the day that we either get to vote on or are issued the new technical regulations. So let's check it out. So well, first of all, good morning, Bobo. I have updated our circuits data based on the Australian Grand Prix. Our strategic information is up on the grid. Top speed uh, could be better compared to... Yeah, our top speed is a concern. We should design a new car park to improve the attribute and keep us competitive. Also notice the depending, defending performance of Alex Albon could be improved. We should consider developing them in this area when they've gained enough experience to make them a more well-rounded driver. Well, we did just get a new experience point. So, what if we go to Alex Albon's profile? I suppose defending is his uh, lowest attribute. And we do have a new Point, a development point to give him. So I could either just make him an even greater beast at overtaking, or I could improve his ability to defend. Um, let's go ahead and make him a better defender. Now we have no more development points, but that's all right. Sort of just rounding him out a little bit. Um, of course, if we can get to the point where our cards are faster, and we can, I can uh, do a little bit better at getting the the old uh, car setups working well. There were seed attribute boosts to, you know, most of these uh, categories so that the ones that are already high, like, you get a diminishing return off of, uh, off of that, at least. Going on a lot of this based on what little bits of research I've tried to do about the game, I've tried not to do that much research about it because I like to, you know, if you've seen how I play, uh, the other big strategy game that I would play on this uh, channel would be uh, Aerobiz and Aerobiz Supersonic. I like to go by what the informa what information the game gives me, because if it's giving me information that I can sort of intuit, then uh, that seems like it's something I should be working with. There you go. As you know. We may change the regulations that define Formula One's rules between the seasons to make the sport fair for competitors and more engaging for fans. With those goals in mind, we are proposing new minor technical regulations with the 2023 season. We want to introduce new lim limitations on wing size and end plate design, which would have a large impact on cornering performance. Review these proposed regulation changes below and vote in good time. Minor technical regulation changes will reduce all teams' design expertise regarding the effect of car parts. This will impact all teams, regardless of their car strengths or weaknesses, so please vote consideration to the fairness and future of F1 as a whole. Oh yes, fair. The low speed wing changes would be a significantly smaller reduction overall, it looks like, or maybe I'm just misreading all of this. All 
I guess there's just more more fields. Um, I tend to think high speed is where we are weakest, anyways. So if we can uh, if we can handicap everyone else in that department as well, I feel like we will have a better chance of catching up. If everybody else will be struggling with that too, then maybe we won't look so bad. This could be a big, big mistake, but making mistakes is how we learn. Let's vote for high speed rate changes. I'll confirm that and then we will see. And I got a trophy as a regulator. So I'm about to regulate y'all. Post race review, Carlos Sainz. He is further extended to lead the championship. Well, they haven't earned any points in the season so far. There's a lot of conversation around Williams this year. Just because there's enough people in the world to uh, talk about everything. Um, a difficult race. So again, they know that every team has bad races, and I hope to see to return to form soon. Honestly, the board has every right to be upset with our performance at this past race, even though the end results don't look significantly different from uh, any of our other prior races. We made mistakes in that race, uh, or in the race weekend, that definitely we could have done better. Whether that would have translated into significant increases, of the, I don't think we would have scored points, but uh, we could have maybe been closer to uh, Vettel's pace, um, instead of just trying to jockey back and forth with Lance Stroll. Anyways, let's take a look at what else is going on. So we did that part. Tomorrow, we will have a new bit of suspension done. We'll have a new bit of scouting done. Tour center upgrade will be done. All right, I want to take a look over here. So next comes Bahrain, Pedro de la Rosa, 2000. You're going to see a lot of the lap records for circuits that are old enough to be back there. We're going to be around 2004, 2005. That was the uh, tail end of the V10 engine era. era. There were three, three liter V10 engines, which the modern cars with uh, ERS and all the rest of that stuff are probably now coming around to the point where they're matching those cars in terms of horsepower, but they were down for a long time. Um, also, back then, they had different regulations on how long you need to be able to keep an engine. They just, there was a period of time where uh, teams would bring like two engines for a car for each of their cars every, every race weekend because they would expect they would be changing out the engine after qualifying because they would just like dial up that engine to the, uh, to the utmost, uh, just figuring it just needs to be able to survive like a dozen laps or so before it blows up. So we will uh, we'll take out any any sort of overbuilding reliability factor in it. Uh, not the case anymore. Now you just have a handful of engines for the entire season. So the suspension manufacturer project is going to be done soon. The design project is there. Manufacturer, okay. Research. We don't have any research projects. We have six available, so let's project unavailable until the 18th. What day is today? The 11th, so we'd have one more week. We don't have any designer research slots. You know, actually, I'm going to take a look at that, too, because I need to go into facilities here. Car development facilities. Yeah. We need to upgrade our design center. It's going to be expensive. But we need to do that. It's going to cost more to upkeep every month by a high factor. These are obviously very expensive things to do. Factory. We would be able to make 
parts faster. Right now, we're not really worried about... Yeah, I need to be able to work on more design projects at a time. I don't necessarily need to be worried about more manufacturing uh, stuff at a time. It'd be good to get these built up, but I want to try and invest my money in being able to work on more design projects. And the rest of this stuff, yeah, we'll have to figure out later. The operational facilities, we're working on our tour centra some more. How much would it cost to increase the boardroom? These are all minor projects, but hey, they do things for us. They make our team more attractive. I don't need anything to uh, increase our... We don't have a morale problem. And what is, let me see what the board's confidence in me is right now. It is medium. So, mm, okay, well, if they start being cranky, I can uh, look at upgrading the other uh, facilities there. But let's go ahead and... Alright, so we have four chassis. We have six front wings. We don't have any new front wings. We just have the same side pods. Same uh, rear wings. We should make a new underfloor. We have four suspensions. We have four side pods. Six front wings. Four chassis. What are the two projects that we're working on right now? All right, they're designing a new underfloor and a new front wing. So, they're manufacturing a new suspension. So with that said, let's go ahead and Start manufacturing a new rear wing. No, we already have six of them. I ain't having these guys sit around, but also I don't need... How much would it cost? I'd just be kind of wasting a hundred grand. I have four chassis. Um, probably going to start developing more the, the thing that I, I read in at least one place before, and it makes sense, is that the biggest gains that you're going to get are from the wings and the underfloor, because modern Formula One is all about aerodynamics. Um, so maybe, let's see, I could make some more ch ch chassis and side pods, just to uh, have extras. How long will it take them to do this? Eight days? Make two of them. Okay. So we've got that happening. Uh, their morale is open. Okay, it's not good. I don't like that. It's only early in the year, you guys. What's these staff? They're okay. What can I do to make you guys happier? I'm working on the team hub. That'll make you guys uh, feel a little better. Once that's done. Race simulator will have you guys getting experience. The scouting department, I don't need more scouters. I just need one over my eye 
that I can just tap. All right, operations center. Um, this is going to just do team attractiveness and just have some. Okay, yeah, it's the team hub that I should be working on because it's going to uh, help their experience gain and it's making their morale work up. So, okay. I didn't end up doing much today, but uh, I wanted to touch base in on everything after we got all that work. Manufactured. We got new suspension ready to be installed. Well, and I just started a new suspension project, didn't I? We have five. Thanks, T. I forgot to mention everybody that uh, it is tea time. I should make myself some tea in between uh, this video and the next. Thank you, T. They're pretty, uh... So we have five suspension twos. That's good. So let's go back and then we'll take a look at, uh... I know I just got done doing this, so I apologize. I'm working on building a new chassis and a new underfloor. So, need to develop things that are not chassis or underfloors. Unless having that team done means I can. No, I can only have two development projects going on. It will tell me I can start manufacturing more stuff. It's not a chassis, not an underfloor. No, we'll never have underfloors. I've got six rear wings. Got five of the new suspensions. Drastically increased cost. Extra hours on the Indiana. I may as well just get two of them. It'll take us a while. Actually, it won't take that long. It's like a little over two weeks, was it? Anyways, I just don't like having those engineers all sitting there. Alright, so you guys are working on construction. Those guys are working on design. It'll be a while for all these things, but... Important email from our scouter. <laughs> Jehan Daruvala from Prima Racing. We now know more about him. We could negotiate a contract with him. These scouts not even an assignment. Let's go to his profile. We'll see what, uh, what we now know. Obviously, he's going to be pretty patient because he is. Uh, he just wants to get into F1, man. So let's take a look at. Uh, He needs a little bit of work on his adaptability, uh, so he's not necessarily a great poor weather driver. We didn't contra we didn't check out his uh, contract because it kind of doesn't matter. Um, so we now have some good scouting on Jehan Daruvala and. Oh, Enzo Truly? Aww. Second generation superstar Enzo Truly. His, uh, his father, Yarno Truly, was, uh, <laughs> the first Formula One race I ever got to go to, the uh, United States Grand Prix at Indianapolis in 2005, which, if you're a history buff of Formula One, you will know was, uh, unusual race uh yarno truly was the pole sitter for that race and uh did not start the race and did all but six cars um this must be his little kiddo anyways we haven't done any scouting on any of the current formula one drivers like 
Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, and Charles Leclerc. So I kind of, I can kind of guess these guys are probably not going to be too interested in what we got to go on. He's a hired driver. He's a hired gun. And you can see, out of all of the uh, F1 drivers, we have gotten a uh, Sebastian Buemi. Oh, he's a reserve driver. I was about to say, Sebastian Buemi, I know his name. He's been an F1 driver in the past. But uh, he's not a, yeah, he's a third driver. Check to him. What about Frederick Vesti? Go ahead and send those scouts out to learn more about Frederick Veste. And they'll come back to us in about a week. Then we can look at, well, Stoffel Van Dorn. Wow, see, we got some F2 drivers that are, uh... Here's Logan Sargent. That's interesting. He is, uh... Yeah, he's a driver from the United States. He is... He has, since uh, this game came out, in the 2023 Formula 1 season... Logan Sargent has replaced Nicholas Latifi uh, in a race seat at Williams. So, first of all, uh, tough luck to Nicholas Latifi. Also, tough luck to Jack Aitken, who would have been, I guess, waiting in the wings for a full-time seat. Uh, he may still be the reserve, I don't know. But either way, uh, continue on. We will have more manufacturing is complete. We have an important email. Car part research unlocked. Now that the technical regulation voting is complete, we know what our parameters are for car development next year. With that in mind, we should start car part research for next season as soon as possible. Doing research for next season will give our team an experience boost that will help with any expertise loss from new regulations. That will be how we pull ahead of the pack next year, but I will leave what we research to you. Thanks, T. So, yes. Um, basically, this doesn't mean that our, um, that our engineers are going to get more stupider next year. It basically just means that the rules changes will mean that they are aiming for a different target. Uh, so they're going to have to, uh, they're going to lose the, anything that they have learned or sort of refined on our existing car will be thrown out the window and they'll sort of have to start over or adjust those. And that's why the loss of technical expertise is happening. And let's see. So, majority have favor voted in favor of the below option. So these changes will be included as part of next season. You can see the full breakdown. Changes passed, high speed wing changes. The tiebreaker voted for, so it was uh, uh, a contentious, uh, contentious situation, but you will see. <clears throat> the exception of Al Aston Martin, who is a team that is at the bottom of the grid right now, but has more resources than most other teams at the bottom of the grid, which means they, in theory, are going to be able to develop a car uh, to a higher quality. If you see the way that the 2023 season is playing out right now, um, that is very true. Um, Aston Martin has gone from looking like they do in this game to the past two races, um, the first two races of the 2023 season, uh, their new driver, because Sebastian Vettel retired, so of course they lost a four-time world champion. They replaced him with two-time world champion Fernando Alonso. He has finished on the podium. He finished third in the first two rounds of this year's uh, Formula 1 season. So, yeah, they are already, I guess, here voting like they're a big boy team. Uh, but you will see that this is the one that sort of, I think, you'll notice just all of the lower 
us jobber teams all voted for, uh, and the big guy teams uh, tended to vote against, with the exception of Ferrari, which is a little interesting. But yeah. So, car part research is unlocked. Um, so yes, we are going to be going to uh, the next race here at San Marino. Good morning, race prep. Race is almost here. Want to make sure the team is prepared. Check the circuit info. Visit performance targets. Check that our car builds are using the best parts. We haven't developed any new parts since the last race. We've just been manufacturing. Seven. We should install the newly manufactured so it's ready for next race weekend. I think we're good. Let's review our performance targets, everybody. Again, reach these things. I'm not going to add any more on here because we're not going to hit the existing qualifying targets. I mean, we're within a shouting distance of reaching Q15, but, uh, or qualifying P15, but we're not quite there. 17 is where we about to shake out. Maybe. And we're not going to get a fastest lap. Let's see what other guarantees we could do. We could finish... 15 or higher. It's interesting that they think that it would be easier to finish with the fastest lap than they think it would be to be able to finish higher than 15th place. And we're not on any sort of hot streak, and I would not necessarily anticipate us to start on one of finishing 15th or higher. I think if we finish in 15th, we should be celebrating uh, as though it is a novel thing, because for us it would be a novel thing. Anyhow. All our drivers are hired. All our parts are fitted. Um, this was our little in-between race uh, video session. When we come back, we are going to start the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix 2022. That'll be at Autodromo Internazionale Enzo Edino Ferrari. The San Marino Grand Prix. Well, I guess they call it the Emilia. It's this race, guys. Um, historic safety car chance, 100%. Interesting. Anyhow, guys, this is Bo of Ultra. This is Let's Play F1 Manager 22. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.